Yo, what's going on guys? Arax here and welcome to Fortnite. For those of you that perhaps haven't heard of this game before, Fortnite is a co-op sandbox survival game developed by Epic Games where you build fortified structures and fight off waves of enemies typically known as husks. However, Fortnite isn't just your run-of-the-mill base building wave fighting survival game. Underneath all of that you have a wide range of other things to do and factor in on your way to victory. Namely exploring the world, scavenging items, crafting weapons, traps, ammo, leveling up the plethora of different playable heroes, earning enough points to obtain new abilities from your various skill and research trees, getting sweet loot by smashing pinatas, and a load more stuff too. So in short, if you like loot, building things, or surviving waves of the undead, then chances are you might be interested in checking this out. However, with so many things to contend with, I mean this game is pretty deep, there is a lot of stuff to get your head around. So with all of that in mind, I thought I'd put together a handy video to explain what goes on in Fortnite, some of the most important things you will definitely want to keep in mind, and by extension, what exactly it is you need to do to see yourself to victory. If you do enjoy this, then a like would be super appreciated, and also be sure to comment down below and let me know if you guys are looking forward to checking out the game yourself. Also, just before I get started, I want to thank Epic Games for very kindly sponsoring this video. Now to begin with, let's talk gathering. Gathering is essentially going to become the foundation of your Fortnite experience. Everything you build and craft is going to require materials. At its most basic, those materials fall under one of three main categories. Wood, brick and metal. They are the ones you'll see on the left side of your screen. Things do get a little bit more granular than that. You can get things like nuts and bolts, herbs, crystals and some items that are even more specific to certain maps or areas. So there's a lot of stuff to collect. But at least for the most basic stuff, like building walls, floors and stairs in and around your bases, you're going to need the most basic materials. You have a pickaxe on you at all times. You will start the game with a pretty standard one, but then as you level up your hero and improve your gear, you can get a fancy one like I have. Using this, you can destroy pretty much anything on the map. Trees and other foliage typically yield wood. Rocks, houses and other stone structures yield stone or bricks. And metal objects like cars, trash cans, lampposts, fences, etc. yield, you guessed it, metal. Keeping this in mind is of course very useful because if you're targeting something in particular, then instead of aimlessly going around the map smashing up everything you see, you can instead be a little bit more focused. And while at the start of a mission you have plenty of time to explore, if this is in the heat of battle, mid-wave, and suddenly you need some metal to build or repair that wall, then knowing exactly where it comes from is going to come in mighty handy. That even goes for some of the more specific items. Take nuts and bolts for example, typically found in things like toolboxes or other items you associate with that particular material. Those more specific items are typically used more for crafting traps or ammo than they are basic walls and floors, but either way, knowing where your items come from is definitely going to help you out. Furthermore, for those of you that want to go that extra mile and be ultra efficient in your mining and scavenging, then you should pay close attention to the second ability on your skill tree, Weak Point Vision. You can get this very early on in the game, and what it does is it will highlight the weak points on objects as you destroy them. So if you target those specifically, you'll almost halve the time it takes to destroy or farm items. As you can see here, you mine where you point your mouse cursor. So when you harvest items like these, this little blue circle is the weak point. And every time you hit it, it'll move. If you target that specifically, it'll speed up the process. Take this quick side-by-side -side comparison as an example. On the left is a car being destroyed where I specifically avoid the weak point, versus on the right where I specifically target it. So yeah, pretty handy if you're trying to be efficient. Also, while you're running around like some kind of Minecraft lunatic pickaxing everything you see, Remember to stop and search chests, boxes, items, etc. Basically anything you can interact with. If you destroy it first, then you won't get what's inside. So open it first, then go back to being a pickaxe wielding maniac. Now moving on from there, once you've mastered gathering, it's important to make the most of your surrounding. Sure you could just go and gather the bare minimum and head directly to your objective, but if you do that, then you'll be missing out on so much more. You begin with a fog of war covering your map, and as you begin to move further out, it'll gradually uncover itself. As you explore more and more, you'll encounter additional objectives or side missions that you can do on top of your primary mission. Sometimes you'll have to, say, help rescue survivors, and in doing so, they'll give you some rewards. Sometimes these can be weapons, other times they can be materials, traps, but either way, it's incredibly useful. Additionally, exploring might also lead you to uncover some hidden treasure chests yourself, which can also include some pretty sweet loot. You might even find cool objectives like this, that'll have you build a construction based on a very particular layout, sort of like following a set of instructions to build a LEGO model. The cool thing about these is that if you're new to the game, they'll also introduce you to different ways of building, techniques you might not have been aware of before, like making archways or double staircases. 
In this situation, completing the structure also allowed me to install a radar tower, which further uncovers the map. So for those of you that like to explore, there's definitely plenty to go looking for. Now moving on from there, let's talk crafting, arguably one of the most important things in this game. Crafting will allow you to make weapons, that's guns, swords, pitchforks, etc. You can also craft ammo, which is going to be incredibly important when you have a wave of husk bearing down on your base. But on top of that, you can also craft traps used to defend your base and some more specific items like batteries, duct tape, etc. And of course, in order to craft, you need materials, hence why the first thing we spoke about was gathering, the foundation of your Fortnite survival. The cool thing about weapon crafting, however, is that every time you acquire a new weapon, you also simultaneously obtain the schematic for said weapon. See, weapons have durability. The rarer the item, the more durable, typically, plus as you level up the item, they also become infinitely better. But at some point, they are still going to break. But that is why you have the schematic. If it breaks, you make a new one. Simple as. And on the topic of making new weapons, that also leads me nicely onto the topic of trading. If you're playing with a friend or multiple friends, then you all have your own personal inventories, your own stock of crafting materials, resources, weapons, you name it. So if you are in desperate need of something in particular, the person that has it can simply drop it. Take this situation here, I needed some nuts and bolts for a trap. 2-6 had them, so we traded. But you can take that even further when you factor in weapon trading. Since we have schematics for all of our weapons, if you've been playing for ages and you've leveled up to be a total badass, sort of like my ninja dude here, meanwhile your friend is just starting out, you can even drop some of your OP weapons that you've obtained from further in the game and they can use them to blitz through their own missions. Same thing applies for if they got a cool new weapon from a treasure chest or something like that. They can then give it to you and simply craft a new one. So when playing together, don't forget to share items. After that, moving on to quite possibly the most important component of the game, and that is building. There are two main ways to defend your objectives. You either use your weapons and shoot everything on sight, or you build fortifications complete with traps that can, for the most part, do the job for you. A combination of both is obviously going to be the best way to deal with any encounter, but knowing how to build well is going to make all the difference. At the most basic level, building walls around the objective you need to defend puts a simple barrier between the enemies and the target. If they want to get to it, they'll have to go through the walls first. Walls, floors, staircase, roofs are all built with the basic raw materials that you farm. Wood, brick and metal. Wood walls are the weakest, metal are the strongest, but wood is also one of the easiest materials to find. So sometimes beggars can't be choosers. You can build basic structures with square panels, but you can also go and use the edit feature, which allows you to deselect certain squares to alter the shape of the thing that you are building. That side quest I spoke about earlier, the one where you had to follow the instructions to build the radar tower is actually a great illustration of this. If you follow the tutorial, you'll know basic things like removing the two middle squares on a wall makes a door, so you can enter and leave your fortification. But going a little bit more complex, shapes like these allow you to create archways, low walls to shoot over, semicircular flooring platforms, and even a double staircase. The staircase did take some understanding, but essentially you edit it and you draw the pattern that you want the stairs to follow and voila. So, building this game can actually be pretty advanced. Sure, you start out with a basic block fort, but once you learn to master all the techniques, given the right materials, you can create some seriously epic structures. But of course, a fort isn't of great use without traps. You have to either place traps on floors, walls, or ceilings, so you will need to lay down floor panels around your base to facilitate this. Traps can be crafted, but they can also be looted and sometimes earned from rewards. However, be sure to pay attention to the map and the direction of the storm. In some of the earlier, more basic missions, you'll typically only have to contend with enemies coming from one direction, so you can save materials by only really defending from one side. Plus, this is handy because there are occasional sub-objectives that'll have you complete the mission without overbuilding. I totally ignored that in this case and just went all out, but if you want to get the most rewards, you should probably pay attention to these. So in short, learn to edit and build more complex buildings, try to funnel enemies into traps where possible, and also build elevated platforms that you and your team can fight from. And speaking of fighting, that segues nicely into talking about the heroes. You will start the game as a basic soldier, but heroes typically fall into one of four categories. Soldier, Constructor, Outlander, and Ninja. I'm the Ninja, in case the hood in the laser blade wasn't already a giveaway. Heroes, much like weapons and pretty much all items in this game, come in different rarities. And while you don't specifically customize your character, for each category, there are male and female options, plus a load of different appearances as well. Heroes come as cards, and again, you can earn new cards through quests, rewards, and other things like that. In fact, it's worth keeping an eye on your quests, especially your dailies. Sometimes you'll be able to get a specific hero type by completing a mission. So if you wanted to, say, become a ninja, for example, and that was the reward for that particular quest, well, you know what to do. Each hero has a wide range of stats that are unique to them, plus they also have special abilities. You can level your heroes up, and as they level up, they unlock more abilities. 
Once you hit certain thresholds, you're also able to evolve your heroes too, in turn allowing you to level them up even further and unlock more abilities. This evolution process also changes the way they look, and of course, the higher your level, the more you'll need to level up. Plus, the high level evolution process actually requires some pretty rare materials, so again, the emphasis on gathering at all times really is important. Of course, once you've settled on your hero, you'll also want to kit them out with weapons and gadgets. As mentioned earlier, you learn these as you progress through the game and as you open loot chests, complete side quests, trade with friends, and also smash the llama loot pinatas. Weapons, much like heroes, can also be leveled up. I mean, to be honest, pretty much everything you get in this game can be leveled up. Weapons, heroes, traps, you name it. But upgrading your weapons also improves their stats, and in a similar fashion to heroes, once you hit a certain level milestone, these two can be evolved. If you can get a decent melee weapon early on, I would highly recommend carrying one alongside your other two weapon choices, simply for situations where you run out of ammo. Sure, you can craft on the fly, but if resources are running low, then sometimes it's just easier to get up close and personal. But weapons are only part of the equation. You can also select two gadgets before a mission. And these can vary from offensive items, like the flying turret I have, I can deploy it and it will help with my defenses. Alternatively, I also like to carry this, which is quite simply a supply drop. I call it in, it gives me a bunch of materials, very useful if my base is being attacked or destroyed and I don't want to leave to gather more materials for repairs. There are gadgets for pretty much any eventuality and you can swap them at the start of each mission, so be sure to experiment with the different ones until you find something you like. And then finally, the last thing you need to keep in mind at all times is your power level. This appears in the top left hand corner of the screen. You can essentially see this as your global level. The higher your power level, the better your heroes are. So in order to increase this, you can do a number of different things. You can head over to the skill and research trees and purchase nodes in here. The further you go, the more your power level will increase. However, on top of that, you can also rescue survivors in missions and you can then slot them in your squads to further increase your power level. Plus, you can also party up with others to collectively increase your level, so you have options. Not everything is tied to the skill and research trees, so points for those don't always have to be a bottleneck. But if you then tie all of this together, the scavenging, crafting, trading, building, fighting, heroes, guns, traps, gadgets, survivors, you begin to see there is a lot more stuff to this game than you might have initially thought. Also, as one bonus thing, for those of you guys that are looking forward to Fortnite and are definitely planning on getting the game, if you go through my link in the description box down below to purchase the game, then you will also unlock the Arax Gaming logo in-game as an actual banner that you can use to decorate your fortress, which is pretty sweet. Never did I think I would see the day where my very own logo is in a video game. <laughs> but anyway, that, my friends, is pretty much it from me. If you master all of the above, then there's really nothing that can stop you. If you've never heard of this game before, then hopefully this is now explained exactly the sorts of things you'll be getting up to. But if you did enjoy this video, then a like would be super appreciated. And be sure to comment down below, let me know what you guys think. But thank you for watching, take it easy, catch you next time, peace out.